Okay, today uh, we are going to start with the relative clause. We have a presentation about the general view uh, to the relative clause. First, we are going to describe, then we are going to go with categorizing the relative clause into two groups as defining and non-defining relative clause. English grammar, uh, a clause is denoted as a group of words that includes that includes a subject and the word forming sentence or a part of a sentence. Uh, so before learning as a clause, it is crucial to understand what a clause is. Subordinate clause and main clause, these are important stuff in order to understand further information about the rest of those. In this example, we always go to Saranda during summer holidays because the weather and the beach that are fantastic. What is the main clause here? What do you mean? We always go. What? I think special. We always go to Saranda is the main clause. So main clause uh, in a sentence generally gives us the main idea of the sentence, the main action, the main idea, main happening of the sentence. What about the subordinate clause? Subordinate clause. What is the subordinate clause? What is the function of the subordinate clause? Or let's exemplify from our own example. What is the subordinate clause in this example? What? Uh -huh. So, can you identify the function of the subordinate clause here? What do we understand from the subordinate clause? Causes, reasons, so supporting ideas, right? Subordinate clause can be said as very briefly, very basically, uh, the supporting sentences for the main idea. So we always go to start doing some of this the main clause, so it gives the most important idea of the whole sentence, the main idea. And this part though, uh, because the weather and the beach that are fantastic, is known as the subordinate clause, which is the supporting sentences. It gives only additional or extra information uh, about the main clause. So, uh, in terms of a brief explanation of what a relative clause is, uh, is uh, relative clauses are a subset of the clauses found that they two are formed by the main clause and the relative clause. It is a clause that needs more information and clarifies us which person or thing, uh, what kind of person or thing the speaker means. So, considering the clauses of a huge family, relative clause is the subtitle, subset of this family tree and functions as uh, giving more information and clarification or in other words we are going to learn it when we categorize into two groups as non-defining and defining as definition of something or uh, giving extra information about a particular thing its basic function is like that so In this example, the boy who is sitting there plays basketball very well. The noun, the boy, do we know anything about the boy here? No. Not at all, right? We don't have an idea. That's why here the function of relative clause is obvious and 
clear in this example, it helps us, it helps us to identify the noun, the boy. Because the noun is not clearly stated here, it's not someone, you know, uh, well-known or famous person, or we are not familiar with that noun or that person, we need extra information, we need a relative clause with which we can understand who that boy is. So, in this example, if you close the relative close part, if you close that relative close part, we have the boy plays basketball very well. And we will ask the question, everybody will ask the same question, who is that boy? Because we don't know the boy. Then, here, we use relative close, who is sitting there? It gives an idea about the boy. Uh, we have two kinds of relative clauses I told you in the beginning of the class. Uh, one of them is defining relative clause, the other one is non-defining relative clause. So, basically, before starting the uh, study of these two kinds of relative clause, we need, we need to have uh, something like a uh, pretty information, you know. Uh, for example, defining relative clause. What can be the function of defining relative clause? Why do we call it as defining relative clause? It, it will define something. So, absolutely, the noun in such kind of a relative clause as a defining relative clause, the noun uh, needs a definition. Just like in the previous example of the boy. And undefined relative clause, what do we guess? Extra information. That means the noun, the agent of the sentence, whatever, will be Clear. someone familiar, someone famous, someone prominent, whatever. Students who don't do their homework must be punished. The friends whom we met in Tehran will stay with us. Let me see all the pictures which you have painted. In these examples, we have students, the friends, and pictures, right? Pictures. We have three kinds of, three different kinds of uh, nouns in three different examples. In the first examples, students, we will always check the noun whether it is family or not. I was family with students. Those, who are those students? And do we know? No. So, by using the relative clause here, we have family with the students. Now, we look at the relative clause and we understand who those students are. Those students who don't do their homework. So, are we defining or...? Defining. Are, yeah. We are defining the student. So, uh, it is a defining relative clause, right? It's a defining relative clause. The friends whom we met in Toronto will stay with us. So, who, who are those friends? Do we know those friends? No, we don't have an idea. That's why we need an extra or... No, it's not an extra. It's a definition. We need a definition. The friends who we, who we met in Tehran is a good definition of the friends. And let me see all the pictures which you have painted. We don't have an idea about the pictures, all the pictures, but which pictures which you have painted. If I say which you have painted, I am describing, I am identifying the pictures. So basically, defining relative clause, uh, define or give essential information about that. Now, let's see. In these examples, relative clause tells us, relative clause tells us which person or thing or what kind of person or thing the speaker means. The friends whom we 
compare to a test of which friends? Students who don't do their homework test of which students? So I met the woman. Uh, when we look at this example, we don't have any little tiny idea about the woman, who that woman is, right? So uh, by using that as a clause, we will make it more clear, right? I met the woman who lives next door. So it's a clarification of the woman, whom we are not familiar with. I met the woman who lives next door. If I say, I met the woman, everybody will ask, who? Who that woman? Who is that woman? But I say, who lives next door, then I have an idea about the woman, because that woman is living next door. So that means we define the woman. particular thing more, which is so confusing among the students, it is the omission of the relative clause, right? Relative clause, relative words. How can we omit, or in what condition we can omit the relative clause? Do you remember? Uh -huh. It depends on the subject, whether the relative clause. Uh -huh. This is the practical way, right? If you want to check, um, find out the practical, easier way of checking whether to omit or not, we have a very practical way uh, to look at whether it is used as a subject or an object. Or in other words, just like I once said, to check whether we have a subject or not. If in the sentence, if the sentence after the relative clause follows, uh, is followed by a uh, subject, what does it mean? That means the relative clause is used as an object, functions as an object in the sentence which also means that you can omit the relative clause because it will not change the meaning. It is possible to omit the relative clause. Uh, so, what happens if there is no subject in the sentence? If there is no subject, if the relative clause is not followed by a subject, what does it mean? It means that the relative clause is function, functions uh, in the sentence as a subject, which means we cannot omit the relative clause. I will prefer someone who I can talk to, or I, I will prefer someone I can talk to easily. Have the same meaning, there is no change in the meaning. Okay. I will prefer someone that I have something in common with or I have something common, uh, in common with. No difference. Be careful. Do you want Be careful. We can never wrong with the relative. If it is the subject of the relative clause, the sentence that will be meaningless. Let's check the example. Uh, I like people who are not too serious, but we cannot say I like people who are too serious. So our rule, as I said before, is to check whether it is followed by a subject or not. Is there any subject here? No. There is no subject in this example. That's why if you omit the relative clause, the sentence will be meaningless. Does not make any sense. So, 
the function, the functional propositions in logic clauses. Where do we use propositions in the sentences? Come and meet the people I work with. This is the book I was telling you about. She's a friend I can always, I'm sorry, always, <laughs> there's a missing letter there, uh, I can always rely on. So, in these three examples, you see the placements, the functional propositions at the end of the sentences. This is the first way. What about the second way? Considering the relative clause structure, where else we can use the propositions? Who can give me an example? For the second way. So it is, let me repeat again, before the relative words, right? Relative clause word, before it, we can use propositions. Apart from these examples, this is the second way. So now, so now, please go ahead. Give us an example. I like to hospital in which uh, many doctors, many successful doctors say. I. I went to hospital. I went to hospital. In which. In which. Many successful doctors work. Uh huh. Thank you very much. Do you understand all? Is it clear? So now we have finished and we have understood the function of defining relative clause. We can go on, we can proceed with uh, non defining relative clause. Let's do it. Non defining relative clause is like more. Like rain as the first wait for end of the rain. Uh -huh. So non defined relative clauses give out an optional or extra information about the noun. We always use comma to separate the relative clause from the main clause. So we have the main clause and the subordinate clause, and we are uh, giving extra information or further knowledge about the well-known or familiar noun or subject, whatever, we combine them. But don't forget, we separate the sentence with using a comma. So comma is the most significant uh, differentiation of defined relative clause and non-defined clause. Everybody, because students, you are getting involved in so many trouble, Right? In the exams, whether to use is it with the comma or not comma or is it no can go omit here or undefined relative clause or defined relative clause, whatever. So the first important differentiation is check the comma. Whether there's a comma or not. My brother who you met yesterday is an engineer. So, my parents, my pen, what is the difference comparing the defining relative clause examples in the previous slides? You have seen. What is, what is the difference? The Right. The basic difference is the possessive adjective, usage of possessive adjectives, which means which means usage of possessive adjectives can make a noun what family, right? So if I say brother, someone will ask me which brother. If I say pan, someone will ask which pan. But if I say my pan, then I make it familiar. Everybody will understand. It is my parents. They are my parents. He is my brother. Everybody will understand. So possessive adjectives, to that touch, is important because it shows us to use non-defined relative clause because it makes them 
family. So that means when they are family, my brother, my parents, my parents, when they are family, that means I will have to give extra information, extra uh, knowledge about that. <coughs> and please don't forget to check the commas as well. That's also important. We have the commas. We don't have that in the defined graphs for us. In these examples, who knew maths yesterday? Who is only interested in gardening? Which are left on the desk? Don't tell us which person or thing the speaker means. We already know which person or thing the speaker means. They give us extra information, which is called non-defining relative clause. Here, Eiffel Tower, which is built in France, is less than 50 years old. So, uh, just by looking at a picture of Eiffel Tower, everybody will recognize which tower is that. It is, right? Which tower it is. Everybody knows Eiffel Tower, so it's something very popular, famous in all over the world. Uh, so that means we will give extra information, not a definition, but extra information about the tower. It is the tower which is built in France, in less than 50 years old. What is the important thing here, the important information here is the age of the city. The fact that it is built in France may be followed with the words by the way, it is additional information. The point is, it's age, it's 50 years old. 50 years old building or tower. So here it's a very important part to be able to differentiate or give the answer to the question why, comma, why it is so important. What if we don't use any comma? Is there any change in the meaning? Yes. Let's see. Mandy has a brother who plays football very well. Mandy has a brother who plays football very well. So here in the first example, we don't have any comma. In the second example, we have a comma. So one of them is defining, the other one is not defining. We have to close examples. Uh, in the first part, this sentence tells us that Mandy has more than one brother, only one of them plays football very well. Because it's a defined relative clause, we have an idea which brother he is of Mandy. That will also mean that uh, we understand he has more than one brother. Okay? Because uh, we don't know who that guy is. We are trying to define him, right? So define the graph of We are trying to define him. So uh, we cannot make any guess, further guess, uh, how many brothers does she have. In the second example, in the non-defined graph of example, man has a brother who plays for Well, this sentence tells us that man has only one brother. How can we come to such a conclusion? How is that? Asu? Can you explain? Can you help us? How can we understand Mandy has only one brother here? Just because we are using a comma in this sentence? Come on. Yes. Any examples? Okay. Here, as we, as we already know who that brother is, we know that brother. 
So we can make a guess and say he has only one brother. It's not, you know, something blurry. It's not, uh, there's no ambiguity. It's clear. It's obvious. We know that brother. Because we already know it. Know it. So the difference basically uh, by comparing two uh, examples, actually we did the same example, we used the same example, is quite useful. I hope. You understand all? Whose 
in the sentence, you will see the possessive adjective, like you know, the man's car, he has a car. This is a practical way for the events. A tree whose leaves have fallen down. So here, who's also used for a tea. So that means it's not only used with, you know, for people, but also for things. What is smart, correct, and possible. Who is a relative pronoun? Who is that object I'm introducing the clause that defines the first expansion, which is very formal and only used in written English? We can use who that instead. So, everybody's asking me, Ojan, where is this who? Where do we use it? That's the reason on the board now. There's only one little uh, difference. It is used as what? Object. Object and more form. The difference between who and whom, whom is more form. That's the only difference. And generally we use propositions before whom, right? Like with whom. Right? The author whom you criticize in your review has written a letter in reply. So this means who and that are also optional here. Uh, um, it's a and that we have one and last important rule for the use of that. That is a relative clause that can replace which, who, who, but on the when the clause is defining. Please guys, don't forget. You cannot use that in the not defining clauses. This is the most significant differentiation and uh, practical way between undefining and defining the other clause. A clone is someone that makes you love elements that, well, might sound very unusual. The factor that I was hoping to see was not only you. And that's all for today.